please be seated. Let me offer a good morning to all of you. For those of you who I've not had the privilege of meeting, my name is Jim Reynolds, and it's my honor to serve as the 16th president of Millican University. Will you join me in one more round of applause for the Millican Faculty Jazz Ensemble? As an institution of higher learning, Millican University has a responsibility to acknowledge the historical context in which it exists. Thus, in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the land upon which we celebrate today is the ancestral home of multiple native nations. Specifically, we stand on the lands of the Peoria, Kaskaskia, Miamia, Muscoutin, Meskwaki, Kikapoi, and Okateti Sakawan nations, which hold historical, cultural, and sacred significance to these indigenous people. We also acknowledge the living history and contributions of these first people, communities that inhabited the land prior to the establishment of Millican University, and recognize their continuing contributions, which allow our campus community to flourish. Today, I have the special privilege of welcoming you to our 118th commencement ceremony. This is a wonderful day for all of us who are part of Millican, whether you're joining us in person or by streaming video. We're especially proud to be gathering with members of the graduating class who will be receiving their diplomas today. More than any other university event or program, commencement has very special and symbolic significance. Although our primary purpose is to pay tribute to all of you who are receiving degrees today, we also come together to recognize the collective efforts of so many Parents, spouses, guardians, partners, significant others, children, employers, friends, all of those who've played a vital role in our graduates' achievements and have loved them to the finish line. For many of us, today is payday. It's a time for all of us who have given our best to our students to receive a special reward, knowing that in some small way, we help to make a difference in their lives. We're grateful to be able to join with you to celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2023. The first commencement ceremony held at Millican University that honored the first four-year graduating class occurred in 1907, six years after the founding of the university. At that commencement, students were awarded their degrees by the first president of Millican, Albert Reynolds Taylor. I'm honored to continue in that tradition and to award 338 degrees today, because this ceremony has such significance for our university. It's the culmination of many years of hard work for our students and their families, and represents a demarcation point for us all. The end of an academic generation, and the going forth of educated individuals who will help create a better society for us all to live and work in. One of the major reasons why Millican has endured since its founding in 1901 is due to the efforts of those who hold our university in their trust. Our board of trustees, the faculty, and our staff members serve all of our, our students in important and meaningful ways and extend student learning both inside and out of the classroom. There are representatives of each group here with us today. And so I would ask all of our graduates, would you please stand and offer your parents and all those who are in the auditorium with us today, as well as the trustees, faculty, and staff, will you please stand and offer them a round of applause, please? Thank you, you may be seated. I hope that when you have time in the coming days or weeks, you'll send a note or an email or a text to the people here who've made a significant impact on, their, on your lives to thank them for all of their good work on your behalf. And let me offer to each of our graduates a word of congratulations and thanks. I know that I can speak for our entire university community when I say that we are very proud of your accomplishments and the opportunity to bear witness to them through this commencement ceremony. In my professional career, I've been asked to offer my thoughts at more than 20 commencement ceremonies. Each time I've spoken, I started by using a word or a phrase along with a vignette or short story to help illustrate the point I was trying to make. So in that spirit, today I'd like to use the phrase, 
Can you see the real me as my starting point? Now, some of you in the audience will recognize that this phrase comes from a song from one of my favorite bands from the 60s and 70s, The Who. I'll pause a second because many of you will probably need to Google them to know something about them. <laughs> the first real rock concert that I went to as a college student was in the fall semester of 1975, and The Who were the headliner group. I was a freshman in college, and the auditorium that the concert was in was an old indoor armory in Des Moines, Iowa that held about 15,000 people. My ears are still ringing from that concert, but I remember Roger Daltrey, the lead singer, screaming the words at the top of his lungs, can you see the real me? Most of the people you've interacted with at Milliken, faculty, staff, administration, try on the outside to be fully present for each of you in whatever way we can, hopefully supportive, sometimes playful, and always grateful for this university and its mission and the fact that you're part of our community. But on the inside, we're just like you. Fearful at times, concerned about things we may or may not have control over, wishing we had the gift of prophecy so we could have a more certain understanding of the future and what it holds. I know many of you have the same thoughts as we do and wonder how this life story ultimately plays out. We are sad at times, angry at times, find joy in simple things, and ultimately lean on people who see the real me. For me, it's my wife, Sue, our two daughters, Amanda and Aaron, some close friends, and now the joy of our life, our grandson, Noah. But something I personally wonder about is how many chances I've missed to find a close friend or confidant because I wasn't able to see them in a way that was the real them. I worry a lot about how we have become less and less willing to search for the goodness in people. We've defaulted to a place where we make snap judgments about individuals based on what we see on the outside without taking time to know people in a genuine and authentic way. In addition, in many ways, I believe we've lost our ability to say thanks for the simple kindnesses that people provide to us each day. Or, even more concerning, we take for granted the idea that the people who love us are, are, or are there for us during our difficult times, the people who see the real us, will always be there. Because of these blind spots, we forget how to be in community with those who have similar hopes and desires but may look differently than us. We forget how important it is to offer a word of gratitude, a word of hope, or even a word of love to those everyday heroes who make our lives so much better. So the point I'm trying to make is for you to open your eyes to the wonder and beauty of this world and the people who are in it. Don't prejudge people because of something you see on the outside. Everyone is dealing with issues in their lives, some more complex than others, but to believe that you know the real me because of what I look like to the outside world is a mistake. Don't ever believe that life is constant or that you don't need to change in order to be the very best that you can become. Also, don't be afraid today to let the people in your lives, family members, friends, faculty, staff members, others that may not even be here, know how much you appreciate them. Each day with them is a gift, and they should know that they are special in your eyes for what they have done to get you here today. Thank them in advance for what they will do for you in the future to keep you on a path to success. Don't ever miss the opportunity to provide help or encouragement or support, or love to the people who need you to do so. I won't say goodbye to you today. I am lousy at saying goodbye because I can never get past the emotions and I often end up a blubbering mess. But I will finish my part of the ceremony by saying thanks to each of you. I'm thankful for what you've given to Milliken during your time here, and I speak for all the faculty and staff of the university and say thanks for giving us the opportunity to know you and be a small part of your exceptional lives. A president I used to work for concluded each commencement ceremony by saying, go out and do well, but more importantly, go out and do good. I'll conclude by saying, I see the real you, class of 2023. Thank you. It's now my honor and pleasure to introduce the provost of Millican University, Mary Black.
commencement each year, along with celebrating the achievements of our newest graduates, we also acknowledge the faculty members who are retiring in that year after many years of service to the university. However, before I do that, I must first take a moment to acknowledge a great loss among the faculty. This week, Ken George, assistant professor in the, in the School of Theater and Dance, passed away unexpectedly. Ken had been a part of the Millican family since 2021, and he will be incredibly missed by his students and colleagues. Ken was originally from Parsons, Kansas, and studied at Northwestern Missouri State University and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He taught at Stevens College and the University of Central Missouri before joining Millican School of Theater and Dance in 2021. Ken's contributions to the School of Theater and Dance and his students' learning were highly visible on campus, from his own scenic designs on both this very stage and in the Virginia Rogers Theater in the last two years, to his students' projects, like the realistic looking but completely fake Thanksgiving dinner his props class displayed in the lobby last fall. Ken was a valued artistic collaborator and a dedicated teacher and mentor. Please join me in a moment of silence for Professor Ken George. And now, I would like to recognize the long-serving faculty members who have retired or are retiring at the end of this academic year. I ask that the retirees seated in the audience stand as we recognize their many accomplishments. The first retiree we are honoring this morning is Professor Judy Crow, Assistant Professor of English. Pro Professor Crow is retiring from Millican after 24 years of service. She is a 1991 graduate of Millican University, earning a BA in English and a minor in German. Professor Crow joined Millican in 1998 to teach in the newly created University Studies program as a first year writing instructor with a split position in the Writing Center. In 2001, Professor Crow was co-creator of the College Readiness Program known now as EDGE. She also served as creator, developer, and for seven years coordinator of first year writing assessment. Among the teaching awards she has received are the Alpha Lambda Delta Teaching Excellence Award in 2009 and the James Millican Educator of the Year Award in 2016. Since 2002, Professor Crow has served as Millican, served Millican as director of the Writing Center. Professor Crow has left a lasting legacy in the English department, the College of Arts and Sciences, and the larger Millican community. Professor Judy Crow. The next retiree we are honoring is Professor Emeritus of Social Work, Mary Garrison. Professor Garrison joined the faculty of the Behavioral Sciences Department in 2005 and completed 17 years of service to Millikan in that role. Professor Garrison progressed to Professor of Social Work during her tenure at Millikan and taught 18 different courses during her 17 years. She mentored over 40 student community-based internships for human service majors, in addition to supervising dozens of James Millikan Honors and other student independent projects during that time. For 10 years, she involved Millikan students extensively in her research on local homelessness. In 2022, she received the Distinguished Faculty Lecturer Award. Professor Garrison has been a valued and respected colleague during her tenure at Millikan, leading and inspiring students and peers. Professor Emeritus Mary Garrison. Our final retiree we are honoring this morning is Dr. Michael O'Connor, Associate Professor of English. Dr. O'Connor is retiring after 27 years of service to Millikan University. Dr. O'Connor joined Millikan's English faculty in 1996. In 1998, he took over duties as director of Millikan's Writing Center. In the summer of 2000, 
Dr. O'Connor was named the academic webmaster, a role that evolved into that of academic technologist in 2002. In addition to these unique contributions to our campus community, Dr. O'Connor continuously served in various service and leadership roles through his 27 years at Millican, including director of the honors program, parliamentarian, faculty convener, and chair of English. Dr. O'Connor's greatest contribution and greatest joy always came from his time spent teaching and mentoring students. Through these and many more roles and achievements, Dr. Michael O'Connor has made an undeniable impact on Millican University for students and faculty alike. Dr. Michael O'Connor. It is now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker this morning, Jarius Ingram, representing the College of Arts and Sciences. Jarius, will you please join me on stage while I tell everyone a little bit about you? <laughs> Jarius Ingram is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Biology while completing the pre-medicine track and is currently applying to medical school. He is Decatur born and raised by his parents, Jeremy and Jamie Ingram, and grandparents, Susie and Jim Pope. During his time here, Jarius has taken advantage of Millikan's customizable experience by wearing many hats across campus departments. In the biology department, he presided over multiple national academic honor society chapters, was a teacher's assistant, founded Millikan's Aspiring Healthcare Professionals student organization, and researched anti-cancer agents against a rare childhood cancer in honor of his late brother. In wider academics, he completed the James Millikan Honors and Long Vanderburg Scholars programs, both aimed at promoting leadership and diversity of thought. In paraprofessional jobs, he aided first-year students in navigating college life by living in the residence hall as an RA for three years, and he connected current students to alumni as a Big Blue ambassador. In athletics, he played on the Millican men's basketball team and was named a Merle Chapman Leadership Award winner. He mentored youth sports camps, earned multiple academic all-conference selections, fundraised for local youth athletes, but most importantly to him, poured into others' spiritual well-being as the president of Millican's Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He's humbled to speak for such an accomplished class and thanks Millican for its phenomenal partnership in giving the class of 2023 the grace to grow as students and as individuals. His remarks are entitled, Big and Blue. Please join me in welcoming our 2023 student speaker, Jarius Ingram. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. <laughs> so before I say anything, um, I want to echo what Provost Black prefaced in that I'm extremely humbled to um, speak on behalf of a class of graduates that I've come to know as some of the most brilliant people I've ever met. Um, I do not take this opportunity for granted, and hope my, I hope my words kind of do us all justice. But I ask my peers for a little grace as I attempt to encapsulate the diverse experiences we've each had at Millican. I'm not gonna lie, bottling up four years worth of uh, memories of approximately 340 unique people into 10 minutes seems a little daunting. Um, oh boy. Well, you know we're just shuffling through to find which page is it? Back in front, okay, we're good, okay. <laughs> So, when I first started, um, after all, how do I refrain from kind of infusing my own bias into our class's story? So, I began with the most basic thing that I knew we all had in common. Our mascot, our nickname, our mantra, whatever you want to call it, I'm honestly not sure, but it's the big blue. Um, we wear it on our jerseys, we chant it at games, and we slap it on every marketing material possible. But, there's a small problem with this popular phrase. What in the world is the big blue? Um, I mean, we solve complex calculus problems, identify themes in literature, 
and memorize medications as part of our esteemed four-year education, but no one has a clue what our school mascot is. And maybe I'm crazy and I'm the only one that's bugged by it, but I thought that it would at least be nice to leave this morning's joyous occasion with a memorable meaning of our beloved Bigot Blue. Um, so destined to solve this milk and mystery, I used the tool we couldn't have possibly graduated without, Google. And I typed in, what does the Big Blue mean? The results showed the nickname Big Blue is generally attributed to Carl Head, a professor of mechanical engineering who used the name on posters during the 1916 football season. So I'm like, wow, helpful. It was put on posters. Okay. <laughs> Next, I found Mil a Milliken tweet saying, did you know hashtag Milliken used to have a mascot? I thought, uh, hashtag Big Blue Falcons. I thought to myself, okay, cool, we're getting somewhere. Um, then an account retweeted a picture of this 1983 mascot at a Milliken football game that was basically the Muppet Big Bird, except the blue version. Um, and it's safe to say that this uh, Sesame Street stint didn't last long with the fans. And uh, my quest for answers was back to square one. I gave up on the internet, put my old thinking cap back on, and thought about what the Big Blue truly meant to me. Breaking it down, we're one, Big Blue, uh, one, we're one big, my fault, and two, blue. So simple enough. So we'll first discuss where the big comes from. You might be puzzled as to what's so big about a small university. In fact, I've heard many of you actually say that Milliken was smaller than your high school. Um, however, I don't believe it's our sheer numbers that contribute to the big characteristic, but rather it's our campus's collective unity uh, that attests to our effective size. We are an interconnected body of scholars, athletes, coaches, faculty, and staff that work in conjunction to make big things happen in and around our community. Graduates, this community has played such a vital role in, in who you've became over the past four years. Truth be told, collaborating with others is a requirement to fully understand who you are. Our individual identities are null without being in relationship or tandem with someone else. You identify as a healthcare provider because of your patients, a teacher because of your students, a performer because of the audience, uh, an athlete because of your teammates, a student organization leader because of your members, or a Millican class of 2023 graduate because of your classmates. More importantly, it's through the loving support of even closer relationships with our parents, spouses, guardians, significant others, children, best friends, family members, etc that we have reached this very special day. It was likely their sacrifices, words of encouragement, and investments that prompted us to continue when we didn't think we could. So graduates, um, I know we did this already, but I think we love our family a little bit more than that. So can we please take a moment and stand up again and acknowledge and applaud those who are here for you today. Maybe seated. So if we lack connection to those just honored and the Milliken community, confusion, sadness, and a loss of identity would have certainly occurred over these four years, as we need others to help affirm and explore who we are. We would have never become researchers without advisors' oversight, competent professionals without our internship or clinical instructor's guidance, or champions without our coaches' training. The collective identity that we agreed to take on by being in close cooperation with one another gave us rise to our individual identities. However, would it really be a commencement speech if we didn't mention that beast that, wrapped, that ripped away our uh, sense of community for half of our college career, and yes, we all know, COVID-19. Um, first off, props to us for seeking a degree uh, through a pandemic. On the bright side, it'll make for great stories later, y'all. Uh, I can see it now. Dad, this anatomy class is so hard. Ha, huh, you think that's hard? Try learning anatomy during a worldwide pandemic where your professor's nine-year-old son shakily records his mom performing a pig dissection. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're sitting at home with your own nine-year-old brother who's screaming his multiplication tables and asking when he can go back to school to see his friends. Kids these days. So, jokes aside, I wanna pay respects to the struggles that we all endured in that time of mass uncertainty. All of us either lost a family member or friend or know of someone who did had to battle the disease ourselves, or severely struggled with mental health due to the extreme isolation. Despite this, we adapted and advanced amidst COVID. A perfect example of our resiliency was our student organizations. With no membership, 
because of prohibited meetings and previous student leaders graduating, our class had to essentially rebuild campus life from scratch. Um, personally, going into junior year, I remember when it was just a couple of friends of mine who were only, the only members of Millikan's uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Since then, uh, this, the organization has grown to 80 plus student athletes and teamed up with other faith groups on campus in the wider Decatur community to host weekly Sunday services, Bible studies, retreats, and even a week of fasting and prayer on campus that culminated in 20 of my peers and I being baptized on Millikan Squad. Thank you, thank you. And just to think, that's only one example of the Big Blue's collective unity and the resilience out of the multiple stories that each of us graduates have. Transitioning into the second part of our class of shared identity, we are blue. So apart from being what seems to be everyone's favorite color, blue is associated with open spaces, freedom, intuition, imagination, inspiration, and sensitivity. Blue also represents depth, trust, loyalty, sincerity, wisdom, stability, faith, and intelligence. Man, if we even master just a couple of these attributes, we're gonna be in great shape, y'all. However, I wanna draw our attention to the fact that blue is associated with confidence and calmness especially, as it has kind of a relaxing effect on our psyche. So when we leave here today, I kinda of pray that our souls will calmly make peace with what we accomplished at Millikan while confidently looking forward to the future. Whatever your next chapter may be, I implore you to boldly walk across this stage as you receive your diploma today. Know you've earned it and leave this auditorium without any feelings of inadequacy. This is not a false sense of confidence, but rather a recognition that you have fulfilled the prerequisites for success, solving problems, working in groups, blooming socially, and staying relevant in today's constantly changing environment. Performance learning, a concept I'm sure none of you ever heard before, um, is Millikan's hallmark approach to education that kind of moves that classroom theory to a real world application. So the odds are in your time here, you have already tilled so much of the groundwork necessary for your future profession. When doubt and imposter syndrome start to creep in at your new jobs, think back to those Millikan memories when you first taught a lesson as a student teacher, successfully drew a patient's blood, created code for an app, wrote an article, performed a titration, solved ca a case study, or won a debate, because these are all living proofs that you have the talent, skill, and education necessary to succeed. While those experiences may have been on a smaller scale here, it's time to kind of burst that Millie bubble that we always talk about and share that gift with the larger society. And besides blessing others, Part of the purpose behind our gifts are for us to see our own value and grow in our self-appreciation, which instills that confidence. So now even though we need that confidence in our respective fields, I urge us also to be humble enough to ask questions, admit mistakes, seek help, give credit where it's due, and be willing to learn from others. For it's this very humility that enables us to mold, refine, and forge the best version of ourselves by acknowledging both our strengths and our weaknesses. Moreover, when we, when we get our position in the workforce, it will be this very humility and confidence that's gonna guard us from the bondage of comparison and unhealthy competition. Instead of scheming for your next promotion in a cutthroat fashion, although it sounds counterintuitive, you will be raised if you lift others up first. You will always be raised if you lift others up first. Wrapping up here, I'm not a huge fan of the common graduation phrase, we made it, because I feel like it denotes having met a final destination, made it where. Um, after all, Millican memories will only be the foundation of our fruitful futures. We have so much inspirational change yet to make, places to see, people to impact. Therefore, we're gonna forgo that kind of cliche and attempt to wake y'all up with a short recall cheer since you've likely dozed off by this point in the speech. If you know me, uh, we get the fan sections pretty rowdy at Millican Games, so I apologize in advance for the competitor coming out of me, but if y'all don't mind, let's remind ourselves of who we are. When I say big, you say blue. And don't be shy, we're literally graduating for goodness sakes. Big. Blue. Big. Blue. Big. Blue. Love y'all. God bless the class of 2023.
Thank you, Jerry. That was terrific. This morning, I have the honor of introducing our 2023 commencement speaker and proud Millican alumnus, Jody Benson. Jody is blessed and honored to be the recipient of the prestigious Disney Legend Award and proud to serve the Walt Disney Company for the past 36 years. Jody has received worldwide recognition and critical acclaim as the beloved singing and speaking voice of Ariel in the Academy Award winning Walt Disney animated feature film, The Little Mermaid as well as the bubbly voice of tour guide Barbie in Disney's Pixar Toy Story 2, winner of the Golden Globe Award for Best Picture. Jody is thrilled to be a part of the Academy Award-winning film Toy Story 3 as the effervescent voice of Barbie for Disney Pixar. She also gave life to the spirited Weebo in Disney's live-action Flubber, co-starring the brilliant Robin Williams. Our kids are grown, so I have no idea about any of these things. <laughs> but I know Jody's terrific. Jody returns as Ariel with all the Disney princesses for the first time ever in Disney's hit Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet. For Warner Brothers, she created the title voice of Thumbelina, a Don Bluth animated feature with songs by Barry Manilow. Jody's other film projects include The Little Mermaid 3, The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea as Ariel, Lady in the Tramp 2 as Lady, 101 Dalmatians 2 as Anita, DreamWorks animated video Joseph King of Dreams as his wife Azanath, starring Ben Affleck, and in Balto 2 and 3 as Jenna for Universal Studios. Jody received a Tony Award and a Helen Hayes Award nomination for Best Actress in a mu Musical for creating the starring role of Polly Baker in the Tony Award winning Broadway Gershwin musical Crazy for You. Jody has played an integral role in many other productions and performances, both domestically and internationally. And she has a new book entitled, Part of My World, with behind the scenes inside stories which highlight the uh, many amazing people for, along her journey. Jody is a proud summa cum laude graduate of Millican University and an honored recipient of the Distinguished Young Alumnus Award. Jody gives thanks and praise to God for her family, friends, and her loving husband of 39 years, Ray, and her amazing children, son McKinley, daughter-in-love Mackenzie, and daughter Delaney. Please help me to welcome Jody Benson. I thought he was going to read my entire five-page bio, which would have put me and all of you to sleep, let me tell you. Um, okay, friends, I'm going to put my little timer on. Um, I'm honored to be here. I have never done this before. I am frightened and terrified. So, uh, you know, I talk with people every single week on stage, but doing a sharing remarks at the school where I went to is, is super emotional for me to stand on this stage and look out at all of you in an audience where I started when I was 17 years old performing. That's a long time ago. And I am thrilled to be here, honored to be here. Our daughter Delaney just graduated a couple of weeks ago from the University of Cincinnati. I have no idea what the commencement speaker said because all I wanted to see was our daughter walk across that stage. So we're going to focus on these students and not on me. That's why I have a timer going. It's going to be nice and brief so we can get to what's really, really important. But I just want to share a few thoughts with the students. All the rest of you are welcome to listen and enjoy, or you can scroll through your phone if you'd like to quietly. But basically, I want to focus on all of you because this is your day. I do not have any words of wisdom. I don't have any great quotes that you're going to tweet and share on social media. I'm not going to say anything that you haven't heard before. But I will promise you, students, what I'm going to share with you is from my heart. And it's going to be true. And it's going to be just for you. I don't have all the answers. I've never had all the answers. And I never will. But I know 
that we have this opportunity right now, and I just want to share my heart. You probably wonder, what does this silly two-word title that we had to give and turn in? When she said, turn in a title, I said, oh dear, I don't have one. Um, but I came up with these two words, and my son, McKinley, who I was running some ideas through the kids because I thought, what would you have liked to have heard in your virtual graduation for our son and your real graduation for our daughter? And uh, these are the words that came out, freedom follows. So I just have a, a couple of thoughts. Freedom follows fear. How many of you are afraid sitting here in this theater? How many of you are terrified? It's okay. It's okay to be afraid. I want you to hear that. It's okay that you don't know what you're going to do tomorrow or next month or in August. It's okay that you don't know where you're going to have your graduation dinner tonight. <laughs> it's okay. You may not believe that right now, that it's okay to be afraid, but I want you to know this lesson that I have learned. The most important thing that you can do right now is just do the next best thing. The next best thing. And that can be for a minute, it can be for the next hour, it can be for the next day, or it can be for the next week. But here's the great danger that I have learned. Don't think too far ahead. We were not created to be able to handle the future. We weren't really able to handle tomorrow. Scripture tells us that today has enough trouble and adventure and excitement all on its own. We're not meant to be able to handle the next day, only today, because that's how we're created. Otherwise, that stress and that anxiety can overwhelm us. I've learned how to do things while I'm afraid. I didn't know that at your age. I only did things that I felt comfortable doing and confident and equipped to do. But let me tell you, I just learned recently I can do things when I'm terrified. I can do things when I'm afraid. And tremendous freedom follows. Freedom follows authenticity, being authentic. I didn't even know what that word meant at your age. I didn't even know who I was. I'm a classic people pleaser. I was raised to please others and to do what they wanted me to do. I only did what everybody else thought I should do or should be, even when I was here at school. I didn't know who I was. We need to take the time to figure that out. What do you like? What do you desire? What are you passionate about? And it's okay if you don't have those answers right now. I promise you. You can start this process of getting to know yourself, your true, authentic self. Listen, this is a big lesson for me. When I stopped caring about what other people thought of me, I felt amazing freedom. I want you to take that home with you right now. When you stop caring what everybody else thinks about you, there is tremendous freedom. I promise you this. Each and every one of you are uniquely designed and created. You matter. You are more than enough exactly where you are sitting in this theater today. Freedom follows beyond compare and compete, right? This is what social media has done, right? Social media has brought in this new adventure of compare and compete. I lost my timer, so we're just going to go with it. It won't be long, I promise. Um, it just closed up. I don't know how to use iPhones. Uh, <laughs> I need my children. Um, but listen, social media has brought lovely things, but it has also brought more stress, more sadness, more frustration into our lives. It's really tricky. And it's interesting that Jarius and I have the same thought pattern because there's so many things that he said that I was like, yes, that is true. Listen, 
When we compare and compete, we become immobile, we become stationary, we become locked up, and we forget who we are and what we're to do. We start focusing on everyone else, and we lose the focus of what we need to do for our next step. So here's the trick, and it's exactly what Jaria said. You wake up and you build others up. You encourage others. When you build others up and encourage others, you stay on your own path, moving forward to do your best and to pursue, pursue your dreams. It's a beautiful way that it works. Freedom follows failure. Oh, wow. What a great word, right? Failure. Very negative, isn't it? We failed that test. I failed in that relationship. I failed getting that internship. I failed getting that 4.0. What if we switch the lenses of our perspective? What if we look at failure as progress moving forward, right? Because we live in a society that acknowledges and idolizes success and accomplishments. But guess what? With our failures, what does society do, right? It hides, we're cast away, it disregards our failures. Do my failures bring embarrassment? Yes. Our failures bring shame? Yes. Do they make us hide? Yeah. But what if we change our perspective on that? What if I can look at that differently and I can talk about my failures. I can own my failures. I can find humor in my failures. I can learn to laugh at myself and be okay with that. What about that? What if I take things more lightly and not so seriously? Listen, not every single thing in our life has to be this big, huge issue. I can choose to sweat or not sweat the small stuff. Yeah, I'm going to take that quote from that book that I read years ago. Not sweat the small stuff. Freedom follows faith. Okay, faith. That's a word, and it triggers, right? It triggers all sorts of feelings and thoughts in all of us, both positive and negative. So what is faith? Complete trust in someone or something, a strong belief in God, or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. I had to look up apprehension, didn't know what that meant. Anxious or fearful that something bad or unpleasant is gonna happen. Relating to perception or understanding. Okay, I wanna think about this thought. And again, you can agree or disagree with anything that I'm sharing with you students right now, but I really do wanna share this one thought with you. Inside this theater right now, we have people from all walks of life, different religions, different cultures, races, different beliefs. And I've learned through the years, because I'm old, that there is something greater than me. Now for me personally, my faith in God has been the foundation of my life. When I worry, when I fret, when I obsess about the unknown, about things that haven't even happened or never are gonna happen, I freeze. I'm immobile. I no longer find joy in my daily life. I've lost purpose. So I have a choice. You have a choice every morning that you wake up. You can flip that perspective. You can choose a faith. Faith that things are gonna turn out okay. Faith that God or something greater has a plan for your life. So I encourage each of you to find that faith inside of you. Find out what that faith is placed in or who. Ask yourself what faith is for you. And if you choose to pass on this whole concept of faith, I totally respect you. But if you wanna dig deeper and see what faith is all about, I encourage you. Investigate, seek, inquire. When I choose to seek faith and I choose to have faith, there is freedom that follows because guess what? Not everything is in my control, right? So I can take a deep breath, and I can let it go, just like Elsa. Just like Elsa, we can let it go. And <laughs> Come on, I'm a Disney girl, what can you say? Um, and lastly, and I don't know if I went over time, I apologize, parents. 
But I want to share one, 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 one thought with all of these amazing students. So freedom follows you. I've shared a couple of thoughts of things that I've learned through the decades. But this is what I want you to hear. You are amazing. This is your day. You've worked really hard to be sitting in this seat, and you have finished well and finished strong. And I am so proud of you. And I know that your faculty and your staff are proud of you. Your loved ones and your supporters here, they're so proud of you. Whether they're your family or your chosen family, you are loved, you matter, and you are more than enough right now. And you can walk in freedom. You are free to become all that you dream, and that dream can be any size that you want it to be. It can be small as a mustard seed, or it can be huge that can't fit inside this building, right? You can take chances. You can take risks. You can fail forward and move forward even when you're afraid. It's okay. Choose to live in that freedom and I am so incredibly proud of each and every one of you. I want to thank you for allowing me, I'm going to say something real cheesy right now, but I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of your world for all these many, many years. And I have to close with a song because that's what I do. <laughs> Standing on this stage singing, whoo, thanks to my voice teacher, Steve Feel, who gave me the courage to be able to go forward in my career. Without him, I really wouldn't be standing here today. So, what would I give to live where you are? What would I pay to stay here beside you? What would I do to see you smiling at me? Where would we walk? Where would we run? If we could stay all day in the sun, just you and me, and I could be part of your world. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know something starting right now. What can you see? Someday I'll be part of your world. Congratulations, graduates of 2023. I'm so incredibly proud of every one of you. Thank you. I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> I will say thank you to Jody. Uh, I'm so grateful for her words and for bringing me back to when my kids were little. So now it's time for the moment for which you've all been patiently waiting. The conferral of degrees. It's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Elizabeth Gephardt, Director of the School of Nursing, who will present candidates from the College of Professional Studies. Thank you. Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Nursing Practice from the College of Professional Studies please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice from the College of Professional Studies.
By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Professional Studies, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Nursing Practice with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree come forward? Julia K. Autumn. Latoya L. Bond. <laughs> Christelle Gail Wheeler. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science in Nursing from the College of Professional Studies please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the Master of Science in Nursing degree from the College of Professional Studies. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Professional Studies, I confer upon you the degree Master of Science in Nursing with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Master of Science in Nursing degree come forward? Asim Adani. Anastasia Sarah Lynn Olson. <laughs> Jacob Busey. <laughs> Amanda. Campbell Drain. <laughs> Ryan Daniel Gersh. Kiliana Christina Sanders. <laughs> Melissa Ann Swati Callum. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts from the College of Professional Studies please rise?
President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the Bachelor of Arts degree from the College of Professional Studies. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Professional Studies, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree come forward? Taylor Nicole Chase. Ruth Ann Edwards. Graduating summa cum laude, Sydney Finch. In abstention, Taylor Elizabeth Gibson. <laughs> Johanna McKay Donovan. <laughs> Emily Minio. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Simon Lenz Nodler. Cade W. Sloan. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science from the College of Professional Studies please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the Bachelor of Science degree from the College of Professional Studies. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Professional Studies, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please come forward? <coughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Justin R. Allen. Luke James Anderko. An honors and long Vandenberg scholar, Michaela Jaden Marie Anderson. Roy Umberto Baggio, Jr. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Isabella Rose Benning. <laughs> Graduating magna cum laude, Kinley Blake. Graduating summa cum laude, J.C. Blunt. In absentia, graduating summa cum laude, Ellen N. Fortemes. Graduating summa cum laude, Allison L. Bragg. Austin Joe. Bridgman. <laughs> Graduating magna cum laude, James Carlo Broach the Fourth. <laughs> Nicholas Javon Burks. <laughs> Graduating magna cum laude. Sam Butler. Laverion <laughs> Travis Campbell. <laughs> Graduating Magna Cum Laude, 
Megan Elizabeth Carter. Graduating Magna Cum Laude, Jensen Nicole Kierlock. Graduating Summa Cum Laude, Carly Clark. Kale D. Crawford. An honor scholar graduating magna cum laude, Leandra Elizabeth Foreman. <laughs> graduating cum laude, Nicholas Robert Fornoff. <laughs> graduating magna cum laude, Kaylee Susan Golak. Graduating magna cum laude, Mackenzie Ray Kane. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Timothy Klein. <laughs> Robert Maida. <laughs> In abstentia, graduating cum laude, Quentin James Miller. Dequir oh, excuse me, Dequiris James Delon Miller. Graduating summa cum laude, Sarah Louise Ness. McKenna L. Parkhouse. Alexander Perkins. Saren Monte Pettis, Jr. Graduating summa cum laude, Taylor Elizabeth Schipper. Graduating cum laude, Julia Alexandra Seaman. Graduating summa cum laude, Abby Elizabeth Smith. Valerie C. Smith. Emma Elizabeth Spurgius, Spurgettus. Graduating summa cum laude, Kaylee Stewart. Graduating cum laude, Trey Borwald. Nicholas White. Emmanuel Lashanson Whiteside. Tessa May Wee Gun. Elisha Williams the Fourth. Lauren Tess Wyatt. Oh, and I need.
needed to say for Lauren. She's an honor scholar and graduating summa cum laude. <laughs> graduating magna cum laude, Gabriel Faith Yankee. Thank you. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the College of Professional Studies please rise? <laughs> President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree from the College of Professional Studies. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Professional Studies, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree come forward? Dane Christian Alexander. Graduating summa cum laude, Morgan E. Bailey. Ellery Ann Barrett. Christian Paul Badeau. Allie Elizabeth Bonk. Graduating magna cum laude, Emily Brewer. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Jenna Elaine Cheek. <laughs> Devon Nicole Dubois. Graduating magna cum laude, Jessica Eckhart. <laughs> graduating, <laughs> graduating magna cum laude, Naomi Mariah Hall. <laughs> Chloe Christine Hugo. Caitlin Renee McIntyre. <laughs> Mackenzie Raylin Moyer. <laughs> Aubrey Lynn Oitker. <laughs> Nanami Rose Owata. Rose, Pierre, Antoine. <laughs> Clea, Mariana, Janae Roberts. <laughs> Madeline, Renee, Robin. Madison Marie Sargent. <laughs> Alyssa Anna Marie Satterfield. <laughs> Madison Elaine Schultz. <laughs> An honor scholar also graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree from the College of Arts and Sciences, Sadie N. Scott. <laughs> graduating summa cum laude, Jessica Rose Sheeler.
Muriel Umuhos. Christina Ann Wasserstrom. Graduating cum laude, Rachel Lynn Welburn. Daisy Lynn Whitaker. Brandy Elizabeth Woods. Madeline Grace Yakeley. I would ask that everybody please join me in congratulating these new Millican graduates from the College of Professional Studies. candidates for degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts in the College of Arts and Sciences please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the degree Bachelor of Arts from the College of Arts and Sciences. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degrees come forward? Graduating magna cum laude, Ariel Avitia. An honor scholar graduating magna cum laude, Jacob Thomas Bailey. Christopher Joseph Bruno. Riley Nicole Cremines. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Antonio Roberto Cruz. Graduating summa cum laude, Zachary Tyler Harper. <laughs> Isabel Hochleitner. An honors and presidential scholar graduating summa cum laude, Maria Patricia Holloway Racine. Stephanie Holsinger. Jessica Marie Janice. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Gwendolyn Grace Klinky. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Margaret Elaine Kusar.
Graduating magna cum laude with a BA and BS degrees, Jessica Lynn McCoy. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Isabel Del Carmen Menendez Aristondo. <laughs> Stephanie Munoz. Alina Grace Neal. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Ngoya. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Adriana D. Patterson. <laughs> Valerie Diane Pugh. <laughs> An honors and presidential scholar graduating summa cum laude, Jamie Lynn Reed. Matthew Wayne Skeffington. In absentia, Braden J. Snyder. Graduating magna cum laude, Rolanda Umaoza. Please join me in congratulating the Bachelor of Arts. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in the College of Arts and Sciences please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the degree Bachelor of Science from the College of Arts and Sciences. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree come forward? Katie Marie Abel. Graduating cum laude, Aaron Woodrow Agee. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Donovan Ray Anderson. <laughs> Rebecca Page Barnes. <laughs> An honor scholar, Graduating summa cum laude, Katherine Pauline Bauman. <laughs> Ashlyn Nicole Bennett. A James, a James Milliken and Honor Scholar, graduating magna cum laude, Madeline May Bockentine. Gabriel Madison Boomer. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Morgan Teresa Boward. <laughs> Keegan Joseph Brady. <laughs> K. 
Caleb Christopher Burley. Demetrius Antoine Burton. Justin Daniel Caldwell. Graduating summa cum laude, Riley Sean Casey. In absentia, Jasmine Brianna Clark. Graduating cum laude, Charles William Corley III. Shannon M. Cornthwaite. An honor scholar graduating cum laude, Seth Aaron Kroll. Summer Esley Dick. Mia Danielle Ishu. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Miranda E. Fox. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Brian Andrew Freeman. Chelsea Page Getz. Zachary Shane Govan. A Long Vandenberg Presidential and Honor Scholar graduating summa cum laude, Sydney Marie Griggs. Jaime Isidro Gutierrez de Calderon Martinez. Jonte Malik Hardaway. Graduating magna cum laude, Olivia Marie Hedinger. McKenna Lanisa Holland. Morgan Sierra Holland. Samuel Lucas Hopkins. A Long Vandenberg and Honor Scholar graduating summa cum laude with two bachelor's degrees, Bushra Ibrahim. A Long Vandenberg Presidential and Honor Scholar graduating summa cum laude, Jarius James Ingram. Graduating magna cum laude, Jade Bandy Kallenbach. Sharissa Kays. An honor scholar, graduating summa cum laude, Emily Elizabeth Griffith Kemp.
and honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Jesse L. Crater. Chloe Isabel LaPrairie. Enrique Martin Laguna. A Long Vanderburg scholar, Allison Navik Manny. An honor scholar, graduating cum laude, Peter Andrew Cusker. <laughs> Charles Lero McLaren must read the fourth. Jordan Michael Mose. An honor scholar graduating magna cum laude, Nicole Anita Obradovich. Colby Jarrett Osborne. Jocelyn Junior Pierre. An honor scholar graduating magna cum laude, Hannah Marie Crocknell. An honor scholar graduating magna cum laude, Christian McCree Reagan. Madeline Nicole Rowmaker. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Medea Salik. Cameron Kalia Skunberg. Bradley Ryan Spradlin. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Victoria Faith Stewart. In absentia, Joshua Allen Stump. Graduating magna cum laude, Keely Lauren Watkins. Graduating summa cum laude, Aaron Michael Wentz. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Clara Gotinez Warman. <laughs> An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Carrie Jean Wozniak. Joshua Allen Yo. Please join me in congratulating the newest Millican graduates from the College of Arts and Sciences. Just one more round of applause for the graduates. We've got to give it up one more time. Now, to share in the significance of this day, I'm going to ask Mr. John Skeffington, the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Millican University, to join me at the podium 
to offer congratulatory words to our graduates. As chairman of the Millican Board of Trustees, I have the great privilege of offering a few words of congratulations from the board. Graduates, it is with enthusiasm that I congratulate each and every one of you on your success here today. As Milligan graduates, you have each, in your own way, experienced that which makes Milligan distinctive. You are performance learning. You are professional success. You are democratic citizenship in our global environment. And I hope you feel today more than any other day that you have a life of meaning and value. At Milliken University, our mission is to deliver on the promise of education. This morning, we see that promise fulfilled. On behalf of the Milliken Board of Trustees, I offer you my most sincere congratulations and best wishes for your future. It's now my pleasure to invite Milliken alumnus from the class of 1985 and Alumni Association board member Eric Sorensen to join me on stage. Thank you, Jim. First of all, Jody, uh, your words were great and uh, your voice was better, maybe. Um, I don't know, you can reverse them. But it makes me even more proud to be a Millican graduate after listening to you, so thank you. And graduates, you didn't know how cool Jim is over here, because A, he goes by the name of Jim, but he mentioned The Who. And The Who was a rock band from the 60s, and they were rebels. They broke their guitars. They weren't, they weren't good guys like the Beatles. They threw microphones and they were loud. So uh, Jim mentioned Can You See the Real Me, which is a great song off Quadrophenia, 1974. So that might be some good listening for you. It's enjoyed Turned Up Loud with a Budweiser. So um, I was a DJ at WJMU, so that's why I know these things. So thank you, Jim. Good morning, graduates. And on behalf of the alumni board and my fellow alumni all over the world, I welcome you to the Millican family. Um, while your journey here as a big blue student is coming to an end, your alumni community is 40,000 strong across the world, from Broadway to business. We're around, so look us up. To help you, welcome you to your ranks, of the, of the Millican Association. The board, the association board has a small gift for you to pick up after the ceremony. And it's an uncut key engraved with Millican's name. So as you all open new doors and cut your own keys and your own path in life, we want you to think of Millican and keep it in your home and keep it in your heart because now you're part of the alumni community at Millican. So we invite family and friends to join us directly after the ceremony right outside here in the Miller Quad. We'll have your gift, refreshments, and a chance to say goodbye to faculty and staff and mingle one more time as a graduate. And I think that does it. So now at this time, I'd like to invite Isabel Benning to join me on stage. Isabella is from Sullivan, Illinois, and is earning a Bachelor of Science degree from the College of Professional Studies. Isabella? Found it. Hi, everyone. Um, graduates, please rise. On behalf of Millican University and the Alumni Association, 40,000 strong, I congratulate and welcome you as the newest Millican alumni. As an alum, you automatically receive a lifetime membership into the Alumni Association. 
Millicum hopes you will continue to maintain ties with the university by sharing your time, talents, treasure, network, and voice with your alma mater. Millican University congratulates you upon achieving your goal of a university degree. Let us now signify our graduation by the ceremonial gesture of moving our tassels from left, right to the left. Fooled ya. Congratulations, class of 2023. Now I'm going to invite all who are able to rise and join in the singing of our alma mater, performed by vocalist Abby Engelman, who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Music degree, majoring in music performance. To the blue and the white we will loyal be, Hail our alma mater, with our voices we'll sing ever faithfully. Hail our alma mater, her cherished traditions will uphold, our loyalty will ne'er grow old. Loyal sons and the daughters we always will be, our alma mater. Please be seated. We're almost done, I promise. Again, let me offer our hearty congratulations to all of you, especially our newly minted graduates. Today does not end our relationship. The folks you were good friends with and mentors to you at the time that you were here with us are still interested in being a part of your lives and helping in whatever way they can. Millican is still your home, a place where you can come to be re-energized or just to sort things out. We want your continued involvement so we can be better and fulfill the promises that we make to students who choose Millican University as their place to be educated. We want you to visit often and never feel that you can't come home. We're here for you and we want to support you in whatever way we can as you depart this place and begin your lives as new Millican graduates. Before we close our ceremony, I would ask that all of our guests please remain seated at the end of the ceremony. The platform party and the faculty will be dismissed first, after which graduates will be dismissed by rows and will exit toward the Miller Quadrangle. You're welcome to offer your applause as the graduates exit once all the graduates have exited, we will recess all of our guests by rows and ask that you all move out of the auditorium by using both the north and south doors as guided by the volunteers who are with us today. It has been a joy and a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for your presence today and go Big Blue. Go Big Blue.